But among those attending will be a group of statesmen known as the Elders, set up by Nelson Mandela in 2007 to work for peace and human rights across the world. The chair of the group is the former United Nations Secretary General Kofi Annan. When I met him here this afternoon, I asked him how Mandela's mantra of forgiveness and reconciliation could possibly be used to influence the increasingly desperate situation in the Central African Republic, for example. I feel it's tragic what is going on in Central Africa. It's tragic what has happened in, in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo for years. And I hope they are all watching what is going on here and asking themselves what happened or simply say what it could be. Nobody landing on the African continent can be unaware of the extraordinarily stark contrast between the joy and celebration of Mandela here in the South and the horror and the threat of genocide in the Central African Republic. How can the principles that Mandela taught, forgiveness, love, reconciliation, ever be translated into that theatre? No, I, I, you, you are right. The contrast is so stark. His own experience and what he did here in South Africa it's a powerful lesson for all of us on this continent and beyond. Basically, it tells us, as individuals, we have choices. We can hold on to vengeance, anger, kill each other, or let it go and reach out and uh, reconcile and forgive, because the world continues. I hope this lesson will be taught in schools, but what is even more important, I would want to see development of robust African civil society who hold on to these uh, basic values and hold their governments to account and resist one-man rule and those people who come to power for self and forget that they are there to serve the people. I think if we move in that direction, the types of leaders uh, we have seen in some parts of Africa will never come to power. Do you think people who are celebrating Mandela, who are remembering him, uh, will at the same time be capable of recognising that there are still enormous problems and that, for example, the bloodshed in the Central African Republic, in the Congo, yeah. that, and, and worse? No, the, uh, I, they should. The bloodshed is there, the divisions is there, the, in inequities are there and the gap between the rich and the poor are growing and we have to be aware of this and understand that uh, these were part of the issues Mandela was concerned about and if we really believe in what he stood for and want to walk in his footsteps we have to deal with these issues we cannot brush them under the carpet. Kofi Annan thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you Jan. Well, here in Johannesburg, I caught up with a couple more of these elder statesmen, the elders, the former U.S. President Jimmy Carter and the U.N. Special Envoy to Syria, Lakhda Brahimi. I asked Jimmy Carter whether he felt Mandela's message could conceivably reach the Central African Republic. Well, I think the vivid <coughs> evidence of Mandela's not being uh, present is the violence and the bloodshed that continues because every time his message has reached people who were in conflict, they have uh, been more inclined to reconciliation and to find a peaceful solution to their problems.